Okay. There's a whole lot here. Holy moly, this is like this is so loaded. I think this is like such a loaded situation because, uh, and it's so loaded that like it's very easy to to kind of um, make your own decision. Um, it's it's just so loaded. Jesus, it's it's there's a lot here, and based on the fact that there's so much information here, it's very easy for people to either agree with Seth or agree with David. Um, it's one of those situations where we're not really getting down to like the nuances of it in like a very specific order. And that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to to really sum this up in like the best way possible and the best framing possible so that we can really get through to it and like find out if this situation uh, is as bad as it's being promoted. Um because there's a lot there is a lot here and i think it's an important conversation to talk about because there are conversations to have about like um <clears throat> violations uh you know individual like personal violations um the first thing i want to say before we get into these videos here um well i watched the h3 interview um for context it's an hour long i'm gonna put it in this video this video will be like, in crazy amount of time but i watched it for the context i think one of the biggest problems here is the fact that David Dobrik refuses to respond. And I noticed that from a lot of bigger names. I understand um, that you can't always call out every every aspect of everything going on in your life. Um, but I think that this story has, has gotten big enough for where David should come forward and say something himself. He's not... Uh, it leads people to speculate about a lot of stuff because he just simply won't fill in the pieces when he very easily could, which makes it like really shitty. Uh, he should be coming forward and talking about it. Um, let's watch. This is the first. This is the prank, really quick. It's a little bit of pretext. So, um, Seth, which is the person that's in the prank, uh, basically kisses this guy named Jason, like a really old. I think it's like forty-seven now. Uh, so I guess he was forty-five then. Seth is younger. Couldn't find his age exactly. Going to assume that he's like in his early twenties. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. And let's just watch it. You'll get it. All right, yeah, so that's the whole thing with that. Now, it's a, it's a weird, there's so much there, right? So, like, first and foremost, he thought it was a girl. After he found out it was a guy, uh, it very, he was very clearly being performative to, like, oh, up the prank. And that's, like, the environment that you're pushed into. It's, like, a pranking environment. So, whereas I, we can make the reasonable assumption that he assumed the first prank, like, that the prank itself was, like, that he was kissing a person in an old man mask for whatever reason, whatever. Uh, the prank shifts to like it was a guy in there. It's very uncomfortable that they allowed it to go on for that long. Um, you know, it's one thing to do like a little kiss, but they like went in there for like the tongue and everything. That's definitely like a like a vi like a very very far too much of a situation. Um, anyway, let's watch. Then we're going to listen to David Dobrik and Jason Nash talk about the situation with with Seth. Oh, let, let, let's talk about this. What really made me happy. What? Today, we pulled a prank on, oh. on my friend, Seth. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's, yeah. And now you probably, can talk about it. It's probably the best prank I've ever, I've ever pulled on anyone, in my opinion. It was, we have this scary mask um, that we've been pranking people with. And it's just a scary mask. And everyone knows that, 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 it, that it's, it's a mask. And I told him... I told Seth, hey, man, I want to do this bit. It's like a dream sequence where you, where you make out with the mask guy and it just looks like you're dreaming and you're making out with an old man because the mask makes you look like an old man. And I'm like, Corinna's going to be in it and Corinna's a girl in my vlogs. And he All right, so then David very clearly explained, uh, like he certainly subverted Seth's expectations. It was supposed to be some other bit. He lied about the bit, which is why Seth wouldn't have really any idea that it was Jason and would like like overlook some aspects that maybe other people wouldn't like the height and whatnot. Um, you know, I believe that they genuinely pranked him into kissing an older man. He's like, and he's he thinks Corinne is really attractive. So Corinne is like, kind of like the hot girl in David's vlogs. Yeah. So, so so he's like, so he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally down. And I'm like, yeah, Seth, just don't hold back. You can make out as much as you want, have as much tongue as you want, just keep kissing her. And but what what Seth didn't know is that I replaced Corinna with Jason. <laughs> so Jason was under the mask. And, and everyone's everyone, everyone in the room's like, this isn't gonna work. This everyone gonna doubted work. you. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, yeah. Brandon, Corinna, like, this isn't gonna work. This is stupid. Because of the size difference. Because of the size difference. About six feet, Corinna's about five, six. And then the bit starts going, and Seth is there sitting on the couch. Jason walks in as Corinna. He's not speaking, obviously. Sits next to her. Seth leans in, and as he's leaning in, I'm like, Fuck yeah, I got it. 
It's game over. It's in the bag. I sit down. I put my hand. I put my hand on Seth's knee, and I put my hand behind his back and start rubbing his back and squeezing his knee. And then he just just leans in and just goes at it. I slip him the tongue first. <laughs> Like with tongue, they start making out. And at this point, we're like five seconds in. And I'm like, this is it. This is what I wanted. I got what I wanted. I'm out. Like we can end this. And I'm like, Seth, Seth, like I'm ready to talk. He's coming. Ha- now he's coming into my mouth with his tongue so hard. You can tell his, his tongue is. Did he grab my ass? I, I, would, I would say that there, there's like an additional argument to be made that like they set up this fake scenario, but then like they escalated it, right? Like, oh, I put my tongue in his mouth. Like that's a weird escalation. Like it's one thing if you kissed on the lips, but you you clearly set a scenario that would be like very attractive to Seth. Like you put your hand on his leg, you put your hand on his back, you put your tongue down his throat. You were like engaging in this in a way that would invite like additional engagement that was far beyond the boundaries of what Seth would have wanted. It would have been one thing if they kissed a little bit, Maybe they, I mean, it would have been bad still, but if they had made out without like tongue and it wasn't so sexually charged, I think that the sexual charge of the situation makes it like a lot worse and it makes it feel a, a lot more violating, right? That's, that's a, that's a lot. You understand what I'm saying? There's a difference between like, oh, accidentally like, or, you know, being tricked into kissing somebody uh, and kissing somebody with like a, with an incredible amount of sexual charge to it. And that's, that's an additional layer to this. I think that people aren't really understanding. He grabbed your ass. He grabs Jason's ass cause he thinks it's Corinna. At this point, the poor dude probably has a boner <laughs> and he's really making out with Jason. And I'm like, Seth, Seth, Seth. And I'm trying to get him to stop, but he thinks it's part of the bit. And he keeps, and he wasn't go- really necessarily trying to get him to stop. There's also like a, I mean, like, not for nothing, but there's also, like, complicit, well, not even just complicitness. Like, these two are very, like, mm, these two clearly are on the same page when it comes to, like, how gross their their pranks are. Going for 25 seconds, literally, 20, I'm not over-exaggerating. Like, you, you literally could have stopped him and be like, okay, that's enough. But, like, you let it go for the views and the money. It's in the vlog. 25 seconds making out with this guy. And I'm like, I, I, I literally, I think I looked up to the ceiling and I'm like, God, what did I do to deserve such beauty? <laughs> and I'm sitting and he's eating it up. He's like, oh, I tried to get them to stop. But I also, I loved it. So it's like, mm, yeah, you didn't. You didn't really try to get them to stop. Like you intentionally went far beyond this person's boundaries um, in order to like for money. And uh, you didn't even like spread the money, which is something we'll talk about more later. And they're going, David, call it, please, <laughs> please just call it, David. Bring her in. in. Jason, it's going on and on. And it is so aggressive. Th- like they're making out like super aggressive. And then I call Corinne into the room and Corinne is standing right next to me. And then, and then I'm like, Seth, Seth. And then Seth finally lets up after 25 seconds of making out with Jason. And he sees Corinne and he just fucking loses it. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was. It great. was my favorite you can't, thing. You can't fake that, you know. It was just. It wouldn't be something you could ever fake. It was so perfect, and I feel so bad. And it's just, it's, it's awful because the poor guy had to go through that, and his friends are probably <laughs> going to chew him out for that for the next like three, five years of his life. <laughs> well, as Seth tells it, the uh, homosexuality is not so accepted in his where he comes from. <laughs> Seth's from Compton. Dudes kissing dudes is not so accepted. Seth's from Compton, so it's like the perfect, like at least the, straight dudes kissing. It's literally the dudes. perfect setup. Okay, so that is very important for you guys to like really understand. There's something that you guys kind of missed. I know that people keep saying like, "Oh, there's a racial factor," and it's because from where Seth is, like uh, homosexuality in Compton isn't acceptable. That gets into a whole conversation about intersectionality and like issues within different communities. We don't need to get into that. But there's something here that you guys aren't, I don't think, catching, um, and that is that. On surface, the point of a prank is to like, let's well, be funny, but nobody understands the depth of the situation. Nobody's looking at Seth and going, oh, he's from Compton. This makes it worse. It doesn't add to it. It doesn't add to the prank um, to, to understand for that. It doesn't add to the prank for them to understand that there are issues within Seth's community that would make him hated by his community. That means that these two are boosting the value of this. They think it's funnier because it ostracizes him from the community. It's a layer that actually makes this like really shitty. It means that these two find it really funny that they're socially damaging him. It would be one thing if they didn't understand the implications of the prank, right? And they did it, but they did understand the implications of the prank, um, and they still proceeded to go along with it. They knew how damaging it was, right? The intent here was actual social harm to Seth. This is what they're establishing here. 
And it makes it really shitty and additionally predatory. It's really fucked up. Like, that's part of it that, like, people, I don't think, like, they're saying, like, oh, there might be a racial factor. It's not just a racial factor. It's, like, a factor where he wanted Seth to be, like, to be ostracized by his community. It's really bad. It shows that the intentions of Jason Nash and David Dobrik are incredibly predatory. It's really bad. It makes it additionally worse. Because this wasn't even a prank in good faith. This was a prank in intentionally bad faith. And nobody's really catching that, I don't think. And it's definitely a factor like a guy from Compton and I made him make out with another older man. It's good for Seth. It, yeah. get, it gets him, it gets him some airtime. Seth, Seth and was really, gets him um, initiated into the vlog. He was as angry as he could have been, but he really couldn't. Cause he was just like, okay, you, you got me. He handled it really well. It was, he, he, he was, he gave it up. He was like, I don't know what to say. That was great. A hundred percent. That had to be one of my favorite pranks. It just, it was, it just worked. I've would give when you had um, you told me Jack's hand was cut open because Heath was throwing dishes. And when I found out, I was like, "Shit, that was good. You got me." Yeah, no, I love the I love the making out pranks. Like, you gotta, I gotta give it up when you give it up. No, it was great, but um, but yeah, that's that's all the time we have for today, guys. Okay. Um, apparently that they're trying to scrub that from the, the internet, but David. Now, as far as um, Seth's in like reaction after the prank happened you could construe it as positive but i think it's a very loaded situation seth is very new to this gang he doesn't understand like the specifics the intents behind it which we just established was really negative and shitty like they had a negative intent here um he didn't want to seem embarrassed by defending himself and so his like his, his, the first thing he snapped to was like okay how can i make the this reaction better uh, and it's like a factor. I don't think it excuses it. Now, if the, like, first and foremost, we already talked about the shitty intent. If the shitty intent wasn't there and David had created an environment where Seth could have said, I really didn't like that prank, and they could have had a conversation, we could have had, like, like this could have been a conversation. We could have been like, okay, maybe, like, we could have made the assumption if it wasn't clear that David was trying to be predatory that maybe there was something behind the scenes where it's like, okay, I didn't realize I pushed the boundaries in the way that I did. I'm sorry. We'd like to still put the video up. Um, would you, it, like, we could take it down, but if I compensate you for it, would you be okay with me leaving it up? Uh, that very clearly didn't happen. Uh, my understanding is they didn't even compensate Seth for that outside of, like, clout, which I understand that there's, like, a level of clout. Like, you, of course... People trying to platform themselves will take cloud as payment in some situations. Um, for the amount of views that David got, the fact that he's worth $20 million, I really think it's incredibly inappropriate to not uh, provide payment as well as cloud. Like, it's just, it, it seems to be him trying to hoard as much money as possible. And I know that that might not seem like a big factor, but you guys have to understand this is a very interesting situation first and foremost pranking is just not a thing anymore unless they're obviously fake pranks and the reason is because it gets really sketchy when it comes to it i don't think you should be pranking at all because you're pushing boundaries which you're 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 forcing you're pushing through boundaries people have set and in order to push through boundaries on a personal level um you kind of have to be legitimate friends with somebody and seeing as the way that they just talked about him they clearly weren't legitimate friends this was more of a hazing scenario Right. Like I could prank my my partners. Right. Because I know what they're comfortable with. And I know that there are things they are not comfortable with that I could still do um, within reason. It takes like a very, very, very like a very, very drastic understanding of somebody to do that. And which is why pranks are completely un, like inappropriate to do like real pranks. Um, but they weren't even friends. And my understanding is that they actually really didn't treat people as friends. They treated this more as like a shitty business and took advantage of people. And it was almost like a college where like there were favorites that would get paid, there were people who wouldn't. They would constantly use people's identities as the targets, like the butt end of jokes. Like right for like Seth being uh, black was a, very clearly a joke to them. Apparently, there's a person named right, Big Nick. Okay, that's his name. I think the socially acceptable term is that they're a little person. When they express a discomfort with like being used solely for that identity, they get cast away. It's very clear that there's no friendship here. So. We can't even have the conversation about like the acceptability of, of pranks because pranks can only be done like really on like friends, especially like boundary pushing. Um, I even find it inappropriate to go to like a supermarket and like spray somebody with a bottle of water and pretend to sneeze on them, especially with COVID going on. Like you really, pranks are stupid. They're shitty and they shouldn't be pushed out there. So we can't even have the conversation. Like I said, pranks are stupid bullshit. They shouldn't even be a thing. Uh, you know, fake pranks are totally fun. 
Um, it's very clear that he doesn't really pay them uh, what they're worth, which I think is a factor. You know, some people are willing to give up particular aspects of themselves. Do I think that if they did pay that um, Nick could not have complained? No, I think that even if they paid him, like actually paid him what he was worth, uh, he still, or excuse me, uh, so many people's names, Seth couldn't complain. Seth could still have complained because the money doesn't excuse the behavior, but at least it would have showed like a, a level of respect to the person where they may not feel as incentivized to complain. Do you understand the difference? You understand what I'm saying? There is clearly a lack of respect for the people that they work with, and you cannot be friends with people if you don't respect them. Um, now, this video is like a response, not from David, of course. For some reason, he just feels like he doesn't have to respond, uh, which puts different things into different perspectives, uh, such as like a second engagement with like a similar kissing prank. So let's go into that. I am totally sick of seeing my friends' names get dragged through the mud because of false allegations and lies and just things that aren't true. So I'm going to address some of those allegations and defend my friends. They haven't said anything because... Typically, the vlog squad does not address rumors and lies and gossip because it platforms the person telling the lies, draws attention to it, and we know who we are. We know our character. We know we're good people, and we know it's not true, but this has gotten to a point where it's such a serious accusation that it needs to be addressed. Everybody makes mistakes. I am not an angel. I've definitely made mistakes myself, and all we can hope for when we make mistakes is to learn and grow from those mistakes. That being said- Unfortunately, since there's no apology, you can't grow from- See, this is like a common misconception. The only way you can grow from a mistake is if you apologize from the mistake, yeah? Telling a lie is a mistake itself and there's been a lot of that going around first of all david's a great person jason's a great person in fact they're both fantastic people david doesn't have a mean bone in his body he's so nice when someone does something that really upsets him he gets disappointed instead of angry okay, be like i don't care about any of this. why'd you do that like that's not cool dude and jason also is not for nothing but if we're gonna play into like this stupid like interpretation of uh david somebody who gets disappointed instead of angry at people uh that's something that you would do to somebody who like you know like 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 a kid, I'm not just I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. It's a little bit condescending of like a reaction. I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking too much into it. Is like the sweetest, most caring, there for you anytime you I need him, care. person in the world. So to see them being attacked like this is just like. It's ridiculous. If you watch David's vlogs, you've seen people come and go from them from time to time. And it's always that person grew apart, their career path changed, they didn't want to be in the videos anymore. And and sometimes it's because they did something that wasn't cool. So this was a re this is like a reference to people like basically being pushed out of the vlog squad. And the claim is like they're more toxic claims. Um they referenced Trisha Paytas, and I'm not a particular fan of Trisha Paytas, but in this scenario, they, what she had to go to, I think, a men, like she had to go to a facility to get mental health treatment, and they never checked in on her. They didn't really care outside of the squad. And like I said before, pranks are unacceptable, but the only way to validate a prank is if you're doing it with actual friends. And so, like, if you don't actually care about the people that are in your squad, you cannot even ha start having the conversation of pranks. Because pranks can only be done with people that you have an, a deep level of comfort with, especially intense pranks, right? There's a difference between pranking me and putting my finger in water so I piss myself and getting me to make out with somebody I'm not comfortable making out with. And it's like, all right, we're going to distance ourselves from you now. And that's it. I think that right now the internet... And also, you notice that the language he used was very specific. He didn't say, like, there's instances where we... He said there's instances where we grew apart and their career path changed. And sometimes they did something shitty. There was no instance of the vlog squad doing anything shitty. So, like, there's absolutely no way. Like, you make a reasonable assumption that this group of people would do something shitty. Like, mo like, he just said, like, we make mistakes, but all of a sudden, like, there had to be fault in the vlog squad, at least in some instances. And for him to only propose the idea that it was like, oh, it was only inappropriate, uh, it was only because either they sucked or they did grew apart from us. We were always innocent. It pushes a, a very disingenuous narrative. That is fueled by a lot of unsubstantiated gossip. Dude, does the whole vlog squad have David Dobrik's face tattooed on them? That is fucking psychotic. Eyes, and that sucks. You gotta be careful with what you're putting out on the internet and the claims that you're making without verifying them. If you're telling a lie and it snowballs, it becomes something that you cannot take back. You can't retract it. And then you just end up damaging people's lives. This is very preachy. It comes from a place of forced moral authority where like this person's like, guys, like he's lecturing you. He's not actually, like the first two minutes of this video so far him is him lecturing people rather than actually showing like the facts. So he's trying to set the stage as some kind of moral authority. I don't know who the fuck this guy is, but he's clearly a fucking moron. 
So, you know, let's no keep reason and with this. probably damaging your own life as well. So I would just like to say, don't. Call and it like, it. since we're going to make, I'm going to make, I'm going to make these assumptions that that could almost be interpreted as like a threat. Like, oh, you might be damaging your life as well. Making it seem like you guys should retract this now, like almost an or else. Now I'm re maybe reaching with that claim, but based on the language that I'm listening from this guy, I think it's a reasonable assumption to make. Sharing your truth if you're sharing a lie, because <laughs> It's not true. Seth accused David and Jason of sexual assault for a kissing prank that was done in 2017, which is so fucked up because he was part of the videos, he knows what we do, and then after the prank was finished, David asked him. Not too long after that. So really quick, he was part of the the, the, the prank, so we knew what he was getting into. Our understanding is this was very new, and the, pr the stage that they set for this first prank was like some form of dream sequence where you would never expect to be f kissing someone else. That is very, very, very dangerous, very, very, very predatory, very misleading behavior. Uh, or excuse me, like uh, words that he's, well, he's speaking very, like very missing, like very poor words, okay? Um, that's really shitty because like David seems to have this thing where he sets up a scenario where he like puts like a ton of work into creating a, a very false scenario that seems very real and then subverting the person's expectations that they're in the prank. Um, I think it's really shitty because apparently he set up this huge dream sequence thing. I think it's absolutely reasonable for Seth to not realize that he was kissing a guy, especially since, again, David made it very clear that he found it funny to ostracize Seth from his own community. Uh, that was part of the prank, It's at least to David. It made it seem funnier to David. That's the great part for him, right? He found it so funny to be socially damaging to somebody. I had an idea to pull the prank on him again, so I thought it would be fun to blatantly ask him for consent. Do I have permission to try to prank you again and get you to make out with Jason? I'm very confused. Okay, really quick, the fact that Seth, excuse me, the fact that David felt the need to ask for consent, which he should be, means that there was a private conversation where Seth very heavily stressed the lack of consent in this situation. There's no way that David would like jokingly ask for consent unless this was made a very big deal by Seth afterwards. Uh, so like that's the that's a reasonable assumption to make is that Seth did privately make this seem like a rather big deal to him that this prank even happened in the first place. Um, expressed enough of it for David to feel prompted to ask for consent. Uh, I think it's something another. I think again, I think it's things that people are missing because we have to fill in a lot of the cracks here. About that, because how the hell could you be so confident to tell me that I have to consent to something that I'm not gonna know that I'm gonna do? <laughs> David films hours. Okay, so so far we got that's it. There's nothing there to even suggest that he said yes. And hours of footage and crams them into four minutes and twenty seconds for his vlog. So this clip was cut short to not actually show Seth giving his consent, but showing David asking for the consent. Now, do you think David would go and film this bit? If Seth had said no? Yes, I absolutely do. So here's the thing, because we don't have the footage, which is reasonable. I don't keep my footage after I make it. Usually, actually, I have some footage saved just in case. But I, uh, uh, so like, I, it's reasonable to like, okay, like he didn't save the footage. But when you ask me if I think based on David's character, if he truly got pot like consent, well, so far what we've seen is a very malicious intent from David. So, yeah, I don't believe that he got, like, affirmed positive consent. I think that he got just enough where he felt like it was consent based on the interpretations of the public. But I don't think it was enough hard yes consent. Okay, when it comes to consent, it's yes or no. You say yes, and it's a yes or a no. There's no middle ground to consent. Right? And also, yeah, why would... That's actually a phenomenal question that this person in my chat just has a nightmare silver. Uh, why would you leave the yes out of the video then? If you're trying to make it the prank of like, yeah, I'm getting a yes from him, why wouldn't you factor that into the video? What? Why would the ambiguous answer be the reasonable answer to put in there? If, if the joke from David was, I want consent, and he didn't seem to get the consent, why would you choose to leave that out of the video? It's very questionable. That doesn't make sense. No. There's no way in hell. This is from a period of time when David was always at my house editing. And I very vividly remember when he was editing that clip, there was a clip in there of Seth agreeing and giving his permission to film this. Yeah, so why, why wasn't it in the video? Why did that not make the video? It just, none of this makes sense. Bit again. He was like, there's no way you're going to get it on me again. There's no way you're going to get me again. So go ahead. Go for it. You're the best. You're the fucking best, David. This motherfucker told me that this was going to happen again. And I can always respect the fucking man. There, much, I want to be very clear. Somebody said, well, bro, there's a kind of a gray area between yes and no. No. When it comes to consent, the absolute only advocation for consent is a clear yes and no in every situation that requires consent. 
We don't do yes or no's or we don't do gray areas rather in consent. Okay. Consent is a very big deal. Um, when it comes to consenting to anything, let's just speak outside of the context of what's going on here. When it comes to like even sexual engagements, there's no gray area. If you ever get gray area consent from somebody, you just don't engage with that person. Okay. We, I'm a very strong advocate for like pure, clear, positive consent. Okay. I truly believe that people like good people, strong men and women only at, only engage with somebody when consent is 100% clear. And if you don't feel that way, I very, very, would very much urge you now to start acting in that way moving forward. Okay. I think that's very dangerous to accept the idea of gray areas when it comes to consent, because that leads to just, that leads to people getting hurt. Okay. I just want you to know that I'm not, I don't want you to feel shitty for what I just said to you. I just would hope that you like really listen to that and like move forward with that. And it keeps his word. <laughs> you can tell by his reaction at the end of the video that he was pranked. It was all in. And it's not just about you getting punished. Or like, oh, I, you know, like, oh, I might have to go to jail. It's also about like potentially hurting somebody and even unintentionally. Part of sexual assault culture is people, mostly men, uh, sexually assaulting women when they don't necessarily know it. It's a very complicated thing that happens. Countless women have told me that they've been in situations where they engage, they, they engage with somebody because they were afraid to say no. Uh, they weren't, they didn't feel like there was a comfortable space for them to safely say no. It is the responsibility for the, the the party with power to establish not just like just comfortability with the ability to say no. It's part of our our society sexual assault culture. You understand what I'm saying? Um, you need to establish you need to establish clear consent, and you need to establish that the person you're engaging with, especially if you're somebody with power, which is usually a, like a man from a physical perspective, that you make sure. That it's very clear to whoever you're engaging with that they can say stop at any time and you will immediately stop. You need to make sure that that situation is safe. Okay. And fun, and he gave permission beforehand. He gave David props on getting him with that prank a second time. Some of David's vlogs happen just so like in real giving somebody props for it happening after the fact is not getting consent before the fact. Time, you know, like, and, and, and something will happen and he captures it on film. But most of these things are preconceived and everyone talks about like what bit is going to be filmed. So a lot of the things that Seth was in were his ideas. I'm not saying that these kissing pranks were his ideas, but he did give consent to them and he partook in them. He partook in several bits after and be next ones and was totally fine with it. Like I, I'd never heard a word from him about being uncomfortable. <laughs> no one is here to force. I don't know that. why you would hear the word. You're not David Dobrik. Um, you're not the leader of this old desk vlog squad why would you hear about it it's super irrelevant what you have or haven't heard you're very much irrelevant to the situation to do anything there's a clip somewhere of seth pranking jason three two one action <laughs> okay so like let's just let's just say this let's say like seth did some shitty things too this prank here and this is why pranks are shitty but this prank here <laughs> i happen to like seth isn't even that bad on like a f like right so let's let's just establish the difference between what just happened here and what happened before seth can like you have to understand like first of all seth is not immune to doing shitty things just because he was the victim in this in this situation that we're talking about but this is seth putting his butt away from his face and he like oh i saw his butthole is it gross yeah is did would he feel if he was violated by it sure he has a claim of like i didn't like that for sure he did wasn't violated by that of course um, he's in the position of power, works very closely with David. There's a whole, like we were talking about the whole, the whole dynamic, but nowhere did they contact. There was no sexual charge in there either. Remember in this kissing, this individual here didn't just kiss Seth, right? Jason didn't just kiss Seth. He invite, he created a sexual charge to it. He created a situation, the hand on the leg, hand on the small of the back, tongue in the mouth. He created a sexual charge to the, to the situation. There was no sexual charge here. So, like, you cannot compare these situations. Like, he could have felt, like, uncomfortable with that, but it still wouldn't have... And maybe you could have said it was some kind of sexual harassment from, like, a work term. Like, yeah, that could be considered sexual harassment. But it's nowhere near, like, sexual battery or sexual assault. That's <laughs> This is, like, a... Everybody's fucking around with each other here. We're all friends, and, like... We do dumb shit. David looked through his text messages and found one of Seth's numbers asking him to do the kissing prank a third time. Seth literally requested to do it a third time. Guys, this is a text from Seth. Sure. Absolutely. I saw this. And this it definitely raises some uh, questions and concerns, right? 
Uh, cause here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, got some funny shit going on in the film. Are you shooting sometime there? Yeah, some shit and got some stuff set up. This is Saturday night. Yo, bro, I was thinking about it. I'm down for another kissing sketch. And yes, haha, what do you mean? Wait, dead ass. That's from about two years ago. He goes, yo, um, bro. He says, LOL, I don't really care as long as you clout me up. I'm not gay. Just don't bro, care. I was thinking about So, like, of course this makes Seth look bad. Like, we're not going to pretend to, like, throw it away. We're not going to, like, you know, we're not going to, like, excuse it as a non-factor. But this situation here and Seth's comfortability doing something doesn't negate the very predatory actions from the start. Okay? It simply means that Seth was encouraged to find it to be more comfortable after being violated, which does happen with a lot of people who are violated. He feels like it's comfortable now. And, like, of course, there's a factor of clout. Like, all, like all celebrity individuals... We'll, we'll look for like, okay, I'm not doing too well. Maybe I should find some kind of a clout situation. Most people do. I try not to, though I've been victims of it myself. Well, rather, well I guess I'm not the victim since I create the trauma. But you understand my point. Um, so yeah, it's questionable. It doesn't invalidate the original things happening at all. Okay, all the groundwork we just uh, laid down with like the incredibly malicious intent from David Dobrik doesn't disappear because a year later, Seth is like, hey, let's do something for clout. About it, I'm down for another kissing sketch. I said, haha, what do you mean? He goes, lol, I don't really care as long as you clout me up. I'm not gay, just don't care. And then he sends me this. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I mean, it's the same shit. Just, I don't know, more open-minded. I don't know if Seth completely forgot about that or if he just hoped that David would never find it the way that he hoped that David had a new computer and didn't have the extra four hours of footage that surrounded the four minute and 20 vlog that included the. So now he's trying to propose a conspiracy theory that Seth um, like was coming out about like the situation where he was violated um, for clout, right? Which I don't think is a reasonable original assumption because from what I watched in the H3 podcast, it wasn't really super preachy. Uh, H3 absolutely was trying to direct it into make. He did seem to try to um, push it in a framing that would make it more as extreme as possible. I'm not saying more extreme than it was, but as extreme as possible. Um, not heavily, but he was like pushing that narrative. But Seth wasn't crying. He wasn't pushing himself as this end-all, be-all victim. There was references to Seth even like not even wanting to come on the show, but David literally refused to talk to him in private. Honestly, within this situation, based on what we've seen, Seth seems to be a very reasonable, rational actor in this. Um, and so like to make this argument that he has like these shady and shitty intentions, I don't think is a fair assumption to make. Based on what we've seen, he seems to be a rather credible individual. So this isn't really... This claim, this claim, this like sub, this subtextual claim, this very uh, misleading, manipulative claim is completely unsubstantiated based on what we've seen from Seth. Bit of him consenting to the prank, but what you're doing is fucked up, Seth. Also, you posted revenge porn of our friend Aaron. Do you know how that's affected her? He posted revenge porn, which is actually, it's 100% illegal. Okay, so to this posting of revenge porn, it's more misleading information. Very similar to the video that we heard about where David Dobrik said that Seth stole like $50,000 from him. Our understanding of that is like Seth, part of his business, which he actually has like created a business where I guess he sets up different situations and he sets up connections. He's like a middleman. Um, he gave David like a bad recommendation and the guy stole money from David. That's shitty for the guy. Seth, you could argue, did like a bad job at his job, but um, it's clearly trying to uh, blow it up in a way that, and present it in a way that doesn't exist. Seth, from my understanding, didn't post anybody's revenge porn. He did signal boost it though, which is, which is disgusting, right? It's indefensible what Seth did. But there is a difference between posting it and then retweeting it. It's still completely inappropriate. It's disgusting. Seth deserves to be called out for that. Hopefully he removed it already and he should absolutely apologize. But again, it's different than posting it. Retweeting and posting is a bit different, okay? Those are very different situations. It's still disgusting. It absolutely is disgusting. Um, and he should apologize for it directly. I 100% agree. But that doesn't mean that David is innocent because Seth did something wrong. It's totally immoral and so, so fucked up. Did you get her consent? I don't mean to sound aggressive. I'm trying to be very logical here. But what you're doing and what you've done is so fucked up. And the lies that you're telling are ruining other people's lives. Did he already apologize and take the tweet down? Okay. Um... I don't know if that is or isn't true. You said that, so we'll leave it in for context. I haven't verified it, though. So, okay. That's just, just for context. Apparently, he may have done that.
And I know that you spoke to David a couple years ago in private and told him you felt uncomfortable about the video. And so he took... That's very interesting that he's like, I never heard anything wrong. Remember he said that before? He's like, I never heard anything about how you were uncomfortable. And now all of a sudden he heard that something was uncomfortable. He's kind of already doubled back. Before he was like, oh, I I just chastised him too. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, It doesn't matter if you hear anything. But he's like, oh, I never heard anything of the sort. And all of a sudden, like a minute later into his video, he heard that like, oh, actually he was uncomfortable. So it's weird that you would lie uh, within the span of two minutes. Video down. And I totally understand feelings of regret and feeling uncomfortable about something that you've done in the past. But you can't blame your uncomfortableness or your regret for your actions when you were a part you partook in it you were okay so like we have to understand what he's trying to say here so what he's trying to say is he's trying to equate this to like a situation where somebody sleeps with somebody else and they regret it so they start crying sexual assault this isn't that this is a very very much more complicated situation where like he did something that he didn't want to do and then he um, effectively tried to move past it based on like ah, a very clear power dynamic from David Dobrik, who is like literally like his boss in this situation um, to make sure that he doesn't derail his entire like life. Like people will do that. Unfortunately, like they'll, in order to not like, you know, to, to stay ahead in their field, they'll, they'll compromise their moral values because the person above them in power uh, requires that to happen. Uh, David Dobrik didn't need to require people to fault, like falter on their moral values. I I don't know. I I would equate this to like jackass, where there was a lot of friends in that group that even if the friends didn't want to do particular uh, stunts, they were still friends in the group. Um, like you know, as far as like pranks go, jackass is probably that that crew of people is probably the only best way you could do them, where they are very close friends. They respect each other and their boundaries very much, and they know which boundaries to push. Again, I don't think that. Pranks are appropriate, but like if anybody is a gleaming example, I would say like it was Jackass. That's my understanding. I haven't heard anything about like some weird power dynamic or lack of consent. They all seem very respectful and to be very appreciative and respect and like love each other. This is not that. So We're interested Except in for Van Margera. Okay. You wanted to do it. You wanted to be clouded up. And I could totally see you being uncomfortable about that bit. Now, in hindsight, when you were partaking in it, I know that you were just filming videos for david's channel and probably hoping that it built up your social media platform and you built a career out of it and i don't think that that worked and and for context uh him heavily uh pushing against that could ruin his career right like if he's like david i really don't like this david could have been like okay i'm not associating myself or i'm gonna speak badly of you in the community or you know there's a lot of go there's a lot of moving parts here and i think you got bitter about it and after a couple of years you were like i i want something out of this I was embarrassed in that prank and I want something out of it. So I'm going to go after them. It's a common tendency for people to go and say that they're not in the videos anymore because they were uncomfortable about doing a bit. And then you, you were just never hit up again, which is false. In Seth's interview with H3, he talked about the situation in one way. And in his other interviews earlier, he talked about the situation in a completely different way. At the end of the day, I would have laughed at it if it was someone else. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So like, I'm the kind of person, if I feel like I would laugh at something, like don't put, don't dish anything out if you wouldn't be willing to take it. So I was just like, well, I pranked people before. I've done some fucked up shit. I would have called my mom and Um, you know, that doesn't really necessarily bother me. Like it just shows that he was like, okay, I should take this in stride. Um, it doesn't remove the violation of what happened. That's just like him convincing himself like, okay, like if I fucked somebody over or did a fucked up prank, I would take it in stride. But we haven't actually, nobody's actually been able to show that Seth ever did anything as fucked up as what happened to him, uh, which is absolutely mandatory if you're going to make these incredible claims. See what my mom thinks mm. about this. And I called my mom. And apparently these are old. So this is in David Dobrik's rhetoric, uh, Reddit. This was from 2017, right after the incident. For people in Seth's situation. Uh, yeah, it is. What, do you, what else can you do other than to convince yourself that it was okay? And that's what happened. He convinced himself that it was okay. He expressed it as such. And it wasn't until later on when he really thought about it. Where it's like, you know what? This is actually more fucked up than I thought. That's not an uncommon thing when people are violated in any capacity, really. Um, this could, this doesn't even need to be pushed into any type of sexual context. If you really think about it, like I used to work places and there were things that I did for my company, um, and ways I didn't speak up for myself because I was like, okay, this is okay. This is fine. Like, there's not a big deal here. And later on, I was like, oh wait, that was really shitty. And like, of course in that, and it's sometimes it takes you years later. 
You understand what I'm saying? So like this, this again, the even it doesn't really matter. This was right after it happened. So that doesn't mean that that's how he feels today, or that's like a reason or the way that he has to feel forever. It doesn't um, invalidate the shitty thing that you did to him. And she did which again, for context, had really shitty intentions behind it. Like he was trying to get Seth ostracized from his own community. Start busting up laughing. I'm like, if my mom is laughing her yeah. ass off, How many everyone people? else are really gonna what laugh their fucking ass off. Ass? I think the magnitude of the lies you've been spreading are unforgivable, and you should face repercussions. I was there, creating these. You're saying you should be punished. You should be punished. You're a bad person. And you should be punished. moments and bits Jesus with Christ. them. And you were here creating the moments and bits that you were in with everybody. A lot of things were your ideas. And I don't know how you could lie about that. There's literal proof of you being so down for doing these bits. And now you're backtracking and saying, Yes, yeah, the so only proof is what you just showed us. So like the way that he speaks there, it's like, oh, there's so much proof. It's like he's like, there's literal proof. It's trying to like expand like as if there's more, but there's no more. That's all that's uncomfortable. Is. But I took the high road and just like played it off like I wasn't. You asked to do but it again, time. like more and of this idea that he is like um like this point of moral authority. It was like, I'm actually a good guy. I took the high road, but now it's too much. And since I am very clearly the point of moral authority, I spoke up on it. Um in retaliation for this, years later, you post our friend's naked body on the internet. It's revenge porn. It's legal. It's fucked up. You suck. I can. What I would really like to ask for context is like, what other kissing pranks has David done? In as intense as the one that he has done to Seth, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen him in the kissing prank. I haven't. I wasn't able to find it if I looked at it. Uh, and also, David Dobrik made a point to say that it was his best kissing prank. So very clearly, even by his own admittance, there is nothing as bad as the situation that happened. It seems bizarre to me that they were so interested in these kissing pranks when it came to Seth with the malicious intent that it was going to ostracize him from his community. I don't see how that's something that can be like backed off of. It's terrible. I can only speak on what I know about, and I know that Seth and Big Nick have both been on H3's podcast, and you are part of the reason that these lies have snowballed and gotten so big. Because Also, for context, it's very interesting that like I understand Trisha hates David Dobrik. Now, I'm not a particular fan of the Trisha, I've said that before. I don't think that she's the point of moral authority, but Tri B Trisha, um, little Nick, big Nick, sorry, I don't know if I'm saying that. Right. Trisha, big Nick, and uh, Seth are all individuals who would be considered like pretty marginalized. Uh, you have a black person, a sh little person, I think I'm saying, hopefully that's the politically correct term, and somebody that has like very seriously, very serious mental health issues. Um, and it seems like the people who are marginalized the most are the loudest voices when it comes to speaking out against the predatory nature of David Dobrik. And so that is very important to understand. Honestly, I don't see any of the white kids coming out, you know, say like white neurotypical individuals speaking out. I don't know. Just saying. It is absolutely a factor. You are, you're spreading the lies without any sort of verification. In fact, when they were talking, I watched you, Ethan, take what they said and say, oh, that's so fucked up. So they did this. You like you would take their words and you would make it sound even worse than what they said. But I, that, okay. but I, I think that you should in the I agree, but it doesn't change the terribleness of what David did. Future, at least try to verify some of the information that's being told to you or maybe even reach out to the people that you have guests on talking about because the things that are being said on YouTube now and on your podcast show are things that should be said in a courtroom if they're true. Anyway, that's my take on the subject. And I hope that mm, that's some really, really shitty language. I, I hate that language. I really hate that type of language. What he really just said in a really shitty way okay, was that if we did something wrong, then why didn't you go to the police? Um, and that is that is an incredible, an incredibly shitty, disingenuous, and disconnected thing to say. Um, that's probably the thing that would make me the angriest more than anything else. The complete lack of understanding here, like, is very frustrating to me. I think that this is probably the most frustrating thing that I heard in this entire thing. That is really shitty language. Um, that is con that is that is just fundamental victim blaming mentality. Um, it is a disconnected perspective. It makes me very angry. People who feel the need to make big false claims realize that if they're serious enough, they will be addressed and 
hopefully you'll get in trouble for it because it's it's wrong yeah that was really bad that ending was very very bad